Oh, boy. Huh? Well, this we don't throw back. But if we find the rest of the orchestra, we're going to need a bigger boat. <laughs> Ooh. Well, we did a good day's work, George. You never know what'll wash down here after a big rain. Oh. Well, we'll get that tomorrow. <laughs> oh, what have you got there? <laughs> <laughs> An American eel. I've never seen one here before. You've got to get his picture. <laughs> He's rare. He must have wandered in while heading down river on his way to the ocean. <laughs> the next morning, George headed out early, determined to catch a picture of that rare eel. Hey, George. Did Mr. Quinn say you guys saw an eel? In this lake? <laughs> Eels never come to this lake. I'm going to catch it and take it home. <laughs> You wanted to be the one to catch it, huh? <gasps> okay, it's a contest. I'll go get my equipment. <gasps> Here was George's chance to get the eel first, so Bill couldn't take it home. The eel was out of reach, and George was out of breath. <laughs> this looked bad. Soon, Bill would be back with his new hook. <laughs> A hook was just what George needed. If only he could get the water to sit still. didn't want Bill to get the eel, but he didn't want the eel to remain trapped either. George, this is what happens when you don't use the proper fishing gear. Oh! Oh! It's just an old cage. <laughs> George, we have to help that eel get back to its home where it belongs. Mm? Well, that's why I wanted to catch it, to take it home to the ocean. <sighs> Being a city kid, you don't know this, but eels travel from fresh water to the ocean to spawn. Bon voyage, Mr. Eel! That's the proper way to say goodbye to someone headed out on the ocean. All the fishermen came back with tales that day. Mr. Quint's tale of how he freed a whale. And George's tale of how he and Bill freed that eel.
fella. <laughs> and then George saw it. His first airplane. A free gift for you. Thanks for flying Kona carriers. <laughs> What a cute little monkey. Waiting was fine by George. After all, he had a brand new toy plane to keep him busy. Only, <gasps> his toy plane was gone. He'd left it right here on a red suitcase. Oh dear, it says here your plane might be canceled altogether. Oh. oh. It was just like a real carousel, only longer and greasier. And instead of ponies, it had suitcases. Not just any suitcases. The red suitcase. <gasps> was a mover maze, but not for people. Luggage got to have all the fun. Good news, they think it's clearing up. Late planes are taking off in 15... George? George? Would the parent or guardian of a little lost monkey please report to the information desk? <laughs> <laughs> George, fancy seeing you here. <laughs> Would the parent dog... <laughs> So long, George. Have a nice trip. <gasps> Have a nice flight, George. Oh! <laughs> now, George, I'm just going to confirm our seat assignments. Whatever you do, don't go anywhere. I mean it. What are you doing here? You should be at the animal loading area. <laughs> Do you have any bananas on this flight? <laughs> well, I'll be a monkey's uncle. How did you get out of your crate? Where is your crate? Hey, you don't belong here. You got yourself a seat. Now we gotta get you to your plane. Quick, you can ride in the tub. George? George! This is the final boarding call for Kona Carriers Flight 5230 to Hawaii. H have you seen George? Oh. Thanks, Captain. Oh, there you are, you little dickens. I was hoping I'd see you again. Remember me from the line? <laughs> you left this on my bag. <laughs> that airport was a fun place. It was like a vacation before vacation. This was wrong. Apples were still at squirrel level. There had to be some way to restart everything. Ah! A 
squirrel-proof lid. Phew. George thought that was a good idea. <laughs> Too tight, what a mess. George had to do something. The golden liquid tasted good, a lot like apples. But there was just too much of it. Luckily, someone had left behind some empty milk containers. There had to be a way to stop this thing. Odd. <sighs> George? Do you know where my yellow hat is? <laughs> oh boy. Where is it? <laughs> huh. How did that happen? No more bottles. <laughs> oh, gee, he hasn't filled the card yet. Hey, up there, no playing in the trees till all the picking's done, thank you. Oh, I, I, I'm just getting my hat. The Rankins would surely be mad that George ruined all of their apples. You done? <laughs> A fantastic job! All that cider already pressed and bottled? <gasps> Thank you, George! <laughs> George? <laughs> so who'd have thought a monkey would do the hard work while his human friend was outside swinging in the trees? But I, I just need... Oh, the important thing is the harvest is in. Uh, that was fast. Wow, this is some operation. Designed and built it myself. See, the apples are washed here, and then we lift them up to the chopper. Mm-hmm, chopped apples give more juice. That's right. We press the juice out of the apples here, and then bottle it down here. <sighs> So George didn't ruin the apples after all. He just turned them into cider. <laughs> You've got an unusual way of stacking. <laughs> yeah, George, if you weren't careful, the Rankins could have had quite a mess on their hands. Oh, look, an apple got caught. I'll get it. No, no don't. <laughs> oh. 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 <sighs> Here, George, you earned it. <laughs> George? <sighs> that is the kite we gotta buy. <laughs> Okay, let's see what we've got. I hope we have enough. 350, 5, 785, 86, 87. We need more. No, no. Oh. You know, you could put the kite on layaway. 
You give us part of the money now, and we'll save the kite for you until you have the rest. <laughs> How long would you like us to hold it? Well, we'll have to find some jobs and earn the money. We can come back for the kite first thing on Monday? Monday it is. Oh. Come on, George, let's get to work. Hello, Mr. Quint, this is Bill from Bill and George's Excellent Job Service, where every job we do is excellent. You do? Great, thank you. Yes, we'll be there right on time. Hi, Mrs. Rankins, this is Bill from Bill and George's Excellent Job Service, where every job we do is excellent. And it's a lot to do. <sighs> I got it! We'll get everything organized. We'll make a schedule. Huh? A schedule. I use them all the time to keep myself A1 perfectly organized. So after we pull the weeds, we'll have exactly 20 minutes to walk the dogs, 25 minutes to mow the lawn, et cetera, et cetera, which leaves us 45 minutes to pick apples at the Rankins. <laughs> Ooh, <laughs> Right and early the next morning, Bill and George set off for work. <laughs> Where to first, George? 60 minutes to pull weeds. Set the official schedule timer, George. Ooh, I didn't know this yard was so big. I hope 60 minutes is enough time. <laughs> Yikes, you're right. We used up 10 minutes just to get here. Bill and George worked as fast as they could. <laughs> Our next job is... <laughs> walking the dogs. 20 minutes? George had to run fast and mow fast. they might make up the lost time. You take half the jobs and I take the other half? Why not? It's still the schedule. We're just doing it separately, right? <laughs> Even though it had stopped raining, the weather wasn't cooperating. It was too windy for apple picking. Hello, George. I was just about to make myself a sandwich. Would you like one? Huh? But eating wasn't on the schedule. Mm. Well, now it was. Maybe, instead of fighting the weather, he should just come up with a new schedule. <laughs> what are you doing here? A visit isn't on the schedule. Inside jobs, they could do while the weather was bad. And outside jobs, for when the sun was shining. That's a great idea, George. I should have thought of that. Come on. For the rest of that day, Bill and George did their inside jobs. And the next day, when the weather was good, they finished all their outside jobs. And on Monday morning, a very tired Bill and a very tired George bought their kite. Well, well, you have more than enough. Here's the change, George. And George even had enough money to give to some needy friends. Here you go. <laughs> 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 
So once again, it was a great day for two friends to fly a kite. And to take a nap. That rock was the snowman's head. Ooh, yeah! That one was his middle. And that was his bottom. <sighs> All this heat and sand makes the farm feel like the desert. <laughs> now, now, without this sand, we can't make grout for our fireplace. Huh? Ah, <laughs> oh, the summer shuttle's ready, George. Where should we take her for a test drive? <laughs> the beach? Oh, yeah, why not? Hey, maybe the Rankins and Bill would like to come along, too. Nothing like a crisp, cool sea breeze. Serves up! Oh, look at all this sand. Imagine how much grout we could make. Even with the right mix of sand and water, it was impossible to roll a ball of sand like snow. Then George remembered how he made a sand castle. He could shape the sand without rolling it. Hi, George. Making a bigger and better sandcastle? Uh -uh. <laughs> oh, I get it. A snowman made of sand. <laughs> Neat idea. Wow. You'd never catch bugs that big on the farm. That's because these are sand crabs. Don't you know what a crab looks like? This can't be the first time you've been to the beach. Can it? No, uh, of course not. Uh, we were here not more than, uh, oh, 46 years ago. 49. Oh. <laughs> what is that? Oh, can't you tell? It's a snowman. Well, a snowman needs branches for arms. Yes, and coal for its smiling face. Hey, we could find those things. Let's go. Why not? Let's all make a snowman. Look, I've got his arms. And here's a perfect nose. This kelp will work just fine. <laughs> Hey, it's starting to look like winter on the hottest day of the year. George, this is one snowman that'll never melt. My, that cool rain feels nice. Ah! Oh, 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 oh. SOS, save our snowman. Hurry. <laughs> Sorry we couldn't stop the rain, George. Hey, cheer up. Helping you build your summer snowman kept us all cool. He's right. The breeze, the ocean, and the rain made me forget there was a heat wave. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Come on. I'm ready. Woohoo! <laughs> <laughs> George never forgot how fun it was to build a snowman at the beach.
But on a freezing cold winter day, all he needed was some sand. George saw something he'd never seen before. So that's where it came from. That little lamp on the table. That's really something, huh? Now, see how the train has been cut out of the lampshade? Now the light shines through it, and voila! Now that George knew how the lampshade worked, he couldn't wait to get home and make one. George couldn't wait for his light picture to move across his own room. But wait, how did it move? Something was making the lampshade move. Was there a motor underneath? The lamp was hot, which reminded George of something. Maybe hot air from the light bulb moved the lampshade. George had his answer. Oh no, the store was closed and George was locked in. Oh well, he'd just have to make his lampshade here. Skates would definitely make that easier. Fortunately, Mabel said everything he needed. George decided to keep track of the stuff he used so he could pay the store back later. Even a monkey on a mission has to take time out for a little fun. <laughs> the lampshade was done. He couldn't wait to show it to the man with the yellow hat. Except he couldn't show it to him because he was locked in and George had no way to tell him where he was. Huh? Or maybe he did. George had to do was wait. <laughs> George? Oh, looking for a monkey in the city is like looking for a needle in a... What? Huh? Well, I'll be. What a smart little monkey. Hi. Oh, we're closed. Uh, come back tomorrow. I just need to pick up my monkey. That's a new one. Tight. George thought it was great to be home, even if he had no idea how he got there. <laughs> ow, 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 ow. <laughs> 
not a pup like a dog. Young otters are also called pups. Ah. From the look of him, he's a very young pup. He must live around here. They usually have homes called dens along the shore. Huh? Otters are very playful and very curious. Almost as curious as a monkey. <laughs> I think he likes you. Better put this someplace safe. See you soon. Man said the otter was a pup. <laughs> Maybe he liked to play fetch too. <laughs> Fortunately, he also liked to play catch. Would they get home? And even worse, what would the quince say? No, we no, can't stop we can't can't stop. <laughs> George was a super good swimmer, but the otter was even better. Okay, swimming was out. But George had a lot of other tricks up his furry sleeve. Otters might be fast in the water, but monkeys were fast on land. George just had to get the otter out of the water. But how? What did otters like? Maybe they just liked keys because they were shiny. George had the beginnings of a brilliant monkey plan. If otters liked shiny things, then maybe he'd follow the fish to land and George could get his key. He did like shiny things. This was working better than George had hoped. But the otter was pretty fast on land too, and now he had George's fish fob. <laughs> Not only were otters fast in water and on land, but they had really great hiding places. And then, George remembered. He must live around here. They usually have homes called dens along the shore. Maybe that was the otter's home. <laughs> Oh no, the otter was underground and George was out of shiny things to lure him out. His only chance of getting that key was to find something else the otter might want. Then he remembered. Otters like to play. They play peekaboo, hide and seek, keep away and chase. Maybe otters would play Traja. <laughs> the trick to Traja was to make your toy look a gajillion trillion times more fun than anyone else's toy. And George was an expert at that. It was by far the most amazing toy the otter had ever seen.
The otter hated to give up his shiny key. But the ball was more fun. <laughs> oh, wait till you see the pictures I took. I got a rose-breasted grosbeak, a pie-billed grebe, and a coot. You ready to go home? <laughs> ah, Mr. Quint's key. You kept it safe, George. The otter loved both his new toys, and he didn't miss the key at all. Especially since his dad had four just like it. Ah! What ho! <gasps> means, hey, what's up? Oh. <laughs> oh, oh. A dragon is on the loose. <laughs> Don't want it getting into the castle again. <laughs> the dragon, it followed us to the castle. <laughs> Good guard George had to stop the dragon. It would prove his bravery, and the king might make him a knight. Ah! Whoa. Yeah. Nothing is worse than dragon breath. Ah! Except maybe dragon slobber. My banquet! Stop it! Stop! 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 <laughs> the king would never make good guard George a knight now. How can we have our celebration with that beast destroying the castle? All he had to do was put a bathtub in front of the castle and the kingdom would be safe. <laughs> but there was more than one way for a dragon to get into a castle. Is it me, or is it you, Medini? <gasps> My castle, she's all broken again. What you really needed was a tub that went all the way around. Is that a bathtub that goes all the way around the castle? Uh-huh. Oh, great idea! Where do you get one of those? <sighs> Thankfully, dragons sleep a lot. <laughs> What's this? Oh, it's a bathtub that goes all the way around the castle. Good guard George thought of it. Dragons are afraid of baths. Hmm. I do not like this name, bathtub. I think we should call her a moat. Yeah. Uh, how do we get water in there? Uh -huh. Oh, I got it. <laughs> She's back. So, uh, we got a moat. But you're on the wrong side. Luckily, dragons can't climb trees, but they did eat loots. The moat had stopped the dragon from getting into the castle, but it stopped them too. And it was getting late and cold. Good guard George saw it. It was the perfect bridge for dragons. George, you okay? He knew how to keep Charky off stage. <laughs> ah! 
You're a genius! <laughs> to build a drawbridge, you need some wood and a way to keep the wood together and a hinge so your drawbridge can fold up and some rope and a pulley so you can raise and lower your bridge. Something was wrong. This wasn't in the play. Come, come! Hmm. For building a dragon-proof drawbridge, I knight thee, Sir Giorgio! Hurrah!